Hallelujah, God. Father God, we glorify you, Lord God. We magnify you, God. Father God, we come to you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, we are your children and we say hallelujah, God. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for Sundays, God. Sunday morning, God. Sunday service, God. Sunday worship, God. We thank you, Lord God, for Pastor Barlow, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you for the word of God, of God that's already have gone forth, God. Father God, we pray, Lord God, that it has been received in our hearts, God. Father God, we pray, Lord God, even as we've written it down, Lord God, we go over it, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for Pastor Barlow, God, even proclaiming, God, with men, God. Oh, men's week this week, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that men will be coming from the north, south, east, and west, God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that men will be taking their rightful places right here, God. Father God, we thank you, God, that this sanctuary, God, going to be filled with men, Father God. Father God, we pray, thank you, that it's going to be so filled, they're going to be standing around the walls, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, this is going to be strong, man, God. Yes, God, man on fire for you, God. Yes, some God's going to be coming off of drugs and leave for Lord God. Some going to be coming off, God, having sex with Lord God, all kinds of folks, God. So I'm going to be coming out of homosexuality, Lord God. But we thank you, Lord God, that as the seed of Pastor Barlow said, God, that even as it get it to them, God, oh, God, they're going to be strong, God. Oh, God, real strong, God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for every young man, God, that's been raised up in this place, God. Father God, even those God who has left out, God, we pray strength in them right now, God. Some God are not in this area, God, so we pray if they don't have a church home, God, that they get a church home even now, God. And then for those God in this area, God, we call them back, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh God, some Lord God, yeah, 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 they've been raised up a little bit differently, God. They got a little bit of ghetto in them, we'll call. God, but Father God, we thank you, God. It doesn't make a difference what they have in them, Lord God. Unless you, Lord God, get in their heart, it's going to change everything, God. So we pray, Lord God. Oh, God, we pray, God, that they get under these mighty men of God already here, Lord God, that they be them, Lord God, and raise them up, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this church vision statement, God, this church mission statement, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that they're doing just that, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And then finally, Lord God, even as we're about to preach and teach, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for graduation Sunday, God. Oh, God, yeah, 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 we do. Thank you, Lord God, for all God graduates all throughout, God. We pray, God, bless us out of Lord God. Watch, protect, and keep them, God, as they go to the next phase. Oh, God, we pray the word, God. Oh, yeah, they may hear God for faith comes by hearing, God. We pray change, God. Yes, we pray that for them and everybody here, Lord God. Oh, God, use this, these lips of clay, God. Thank you, God, Jesus, Lord God. Oh, yeah, 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 God. We bless and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So I want to speak to the graduates. As you go off to college or wherever you may go, continue to go to church. Because most times, that's where you hear the word of God from, right here in the pulpit. Yes, you also hear the word of God when you read the scripture. Yes, you also hear the word of God when God speaks to your heart. Yes, you also hear the word of God when God can speak to your parents. But faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And most of the time, you hear it right here through the pulpit. Amen? So what does that mean? That means we got to keep coming to church. That means sometimes, especially us adults, we're going to be tired. We ain't going to feel like it. But we still got to come because that's where our faith comes. Amen? That's the reason why we want other folks to come to church because we want to build up their faith. So we all got to keep coming to church. You heard Pastor talk about uh, earlier about writing down, getting books, writing down men's names. We got to do that. Know why? When we do that, our faith are gonna, is going to build up. And guess what? Next thing we're going to be coming here and say, where do all these men come from? Faith came from hearing the word of God. Amen? All right. So first point, we talked about how do we get faith, okay? Next thing we want to talk about is how do we define faith, okay? We're going to give you three different de uh, definitions. I'm only going to use primarily one, um, but there is multiple definitions of faith. The first definition I want to use is we define faith as agreeing with God's point of view, okay? 
Faith is agreeing with God's point of view. Now, the uh, foundational scripture I use for that is Mark 11 and 22, where it says, have faith in God. So agree with God's point of view. That means agree with the word, agree with the Bible. The next uh, point I want to make, how do we define faith? We define faith as believing God is who he said he is. That's Romans, Romans, Hebrews 11 and 6, where the scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to uh, uh, please God. For he who comes to God must believe he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we're defining faith as believing God is who he said. Amen. And that's Hebrews 11 and 6. And the third way we're going to define faith, and we're going to use this scripture primarily today, is by Hebrews 11 and 1. Y'all know that scripture. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. That's how we're going to define faith. We'll talk about this scripture a little bit more as we go on. But that's the three ways we define faith. Now, okay, why do we need faith? Okay. Now, you know, you hear us talk about in church, faith, 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 faith. Pastor preach about faith every week, even when he don't preach about faith, you hear something about faith, okay? So why do we need faith? Because we get saved through faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we're saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus. So we need faith to get saved. Next reason, okay, why faith is important. We see Jesus taught us so many of our blessings only come by faith, okay? Now, these are blessings. Let's talk about a couple of them. Y'all heard them in the Bible. Y'all heard them as y'all came to church. Let's talk about it. We'll talk about Mark 10 and 52. That's blind Bartimaeus. And then we see uh, Mark 5 and 34, and that's the woman with issue of, uh, the issue of blood. Now, with both of them, blind Bartimaeus, they was trying to shut him down. He was like, ah, Jesus, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me, okay? With the woman of issue of blood, there's a whole crowd around Jesus, and she pressed her way in to touch Jesus. Both of those folks, okay, a man and a woman, what did Jesus say? Your faith has made you whole, okay? So we need faith. Let's give you another example. So here he's telling a person, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has gotten you what you wanted to get, amen? All right, let's look at another example. We see over in Matthew 8, uh, the fifth chapter through the 13th verse, that's the centurion. He's the servant. He's coming. He's the, he's the one in charge. He's coming on behalf of his servant. And then we see, so that's a man. And then we see over in Matthew 15, 21 through 28, we see the, the Gentile woman from Canaan, and she's coming on behalf of her, her daughter. And that's the one where Jesus said, you know, I, I didn't come for you. And, the, and then she said, hey, I even, I, I mean, give me the crumbs. Well, to both of those people, both of them, a man and a woman, Jesus said, wow, you have great faith. Go look at it in the Bible. So they weren't coming on behalf of themselves. They were coming on behalf of somebody else. Jesus said, you have great faith, and they got what they wanted for somebody else. Amen? All right, well, I'm going to tell you something else about faith, okay? Now, y'all remember uh, the, the story of the paralytic, and this is a guy that was paralyzed, and his four friends was carrying him, and that's over in Luke 5, chapter 14 to 26. And basically, this, this man can't walk. So he got four friends carrying him. He carried him to Jesus, carried him to Jesus. He can't get into Jesus. They got to climb up on a roof. They got to bust the roof up and bam, bam. And then, he, and then what Jesus looked at, he says to them, uh, he says, Jesus saw their faith. And then he said, your, your sins are forgiven. So your faith is important because Jesus needs to see our faith. Now, that scripture also tells us that we need to have friends of faith, okay? Friends, friends, okay? Because there's sometimes we can't carry ourselves. Sometimes we mess up. Now, if all your friends ain't saved, you got to get some saved friends, okay? I don't care how young you are. You know, I don't, you know, uh, you know, I, well, you know, the way I grew up, you know, I judge folk growing up in high school. When I say judge folk, judge folk how they look. You know, you my friend, if, you know, you style like me. I play a little sports. You play a little sports like me, you know. So I'm judging you, you know, basically I'm, I'm judging you based on how you look. You know, you look all right. You know, but when I got older, when I started hearing the word of God, it don't make a difference what you look like. Amen. If you know Jesus, you could be this big, this tall, that tall. It doesn't make any difference. I got friends of all types of folk. Why? I need all types of friends. So I'm telling y'all, young folks especially, you know, don't judge folk on how they look. They got Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, befriend them. Oh, yeah, because you don't know when you may need them to carry you to Jesus. Or you don't know when you got another friend who going off crazy, plum loco, and all of y'all got to carry him to Jesus. So you want friends of faith. Amen. 
So, this, you know, so the first point I said we need, you know, faith is so we can get saved. The second point I talked about that Jesus taught us many of our blessings are by believing on, through our faith. And the third reason, I'm just going to briefly touch on this. I really would love to preach on this, but I can't today because I got another assignment. But it says our victory, our overcoming is tied to our faith. And that's 1 John 5 and 4. You all know the scripture, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And, you know, that's a wonderful scripture. That scripture is left wide open, and God left it wide open, I believe, for a purpose. You know, this is our victory, even though overcomes the world, even our faith in God. You know, that's Mark 22. This is the victory, even though overcomes the world, even our faith in the word of God. The scripture we already talked about, Romans. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. I, I, I can't preach that right now because I got another assignment. Amen? Amen. So let's just summarize what we went over so far before I just move forward. So far, we talked about how we get faith. We talked about we get it from God. We talked about we get it from hearing from God. So far, we talked about how to define faith, and we talked about defining faith as agreeing with God, points of view. We talked about faith as believing God is who he said. We talked about faith is Romans 11 and 1. Then we talked about why we need our faith. We talked about we need it to be saved. We talked about we need it because many of our blessings are based on faith. And lastly, we talked about our overcoming our victory is tied to our faith. And this is the point I want to kind of slow down on because all this is review. Amen. Amen. Now, you got to get it, though, because, you know, you try, you test it. How do we recognize faith? Okay, since we're talking about faith and all that, how do we recognize it? Because we need to recognize it because we don't recognize it. Then we don't we don't know when we're walking and then we'll be dumb. Hebrews 11 and 1 says now faith is the substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen. Now, if, if we can recognize what faith is made up of, okay, then we can recognize faith. For example, if I ask you, you know, what was in this bottle, you know, you would tell me it's water, you know, because, you know, it says water on the outside. But if I told you, okay, that in this bottle right here, there was uh, is water and uh, fresh squeezed lemons and uh, sugar, what would you tell me in this bottle? It's lemonade. All right. So you can recognize something by what it's made of, okay? The same way with faith. Okay, so let's talk about faith a little bit. I'm I'm over in Hebrews 11 and 1. It starts off, Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of, okay? So it's telling us right there, faith is made up of something, okay? Just like lemonade and lemon and water, faith is made up of something. Now when we keep reading that particular scripture, it says now faith is the substance of, then it says things hoped for. So, you know, faith is made up of things hoped for. Then it says evidence of things not seen. So, you know, it's made up of evidence of things not seen. So we see here that faith is made up of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. That's a whole lot of words I just said. OK, so we're going to kind of shorten that little word up right here. So we're going to call things hoped for. OK, just hope. OK, cool with me. We're going to call evidence of things not seen just evidence. OK. And so now we're going to say, now faith is hope and evidence, okay? Hope and evidence. Now, we're just saying that for this teaching right now, okay? Okay. Now faith is what? Hope and evidence. All right, hope and evidence. Now, when you look at Hebrews, Hebrews starts off 11 to 1. Now faith is something of things so far, evidence of things not seen. Now faith is what I said, hope and evidence. Then starting at verse 4, it lists 17 examples of faith. 17 of them, all right? So, so we're going to look at these examples and learn to see how these examples talk about faith, hope, and evidence, okay? Faith, hope, and evidence, okay? So, but before we look at example, I just want to make sure we go over one more point that we already talked about. We said faith comes by what? Hearing. All right, we want to make sure. And we said faith is what? Hope and evidence, okay? Remember that. Faith comes by hearing. Faith is hope and evidence. Let's look at a few examples. I pray to God it bless you. Hey, man, we're going to look at... Um, Verse 7, and you can put it up if you want. Verse 7, it starts off by faith Noah, okay? So it's talking about Noah's faith, okay? Okay, we see uh, this scripture. Now, when you look at Hebrews 11 and it talks about the folks' faith, let me just make sure you understand. It's just a snapshot of their faith, okay? It's not the whole story. And then even when you look back in the Bible to look at this story, you know, like the Bible is not like a, a, a biography, I think you call it, and it's somebody's life story, you know? So it tells you bits and pieces, but it don't tell you everything, all right? All right, so you see the, the uh, Noah here in uh, Hebrews 11 to 7. You also can read Noah's account in Genesis 6 through 8. Now, we see here in uh, verse 7 that Noah heard God's word, okay? He heard, okay, we see that also in Genesis 6 and 8. He heard that God wanted to save his family from the flood, okay? 
So we see, here's Noah, and what did he do? He heard the word of God. Okay, he heard it, that God wanted to save his family from the flood. Then we see Noah put his hope in the word of God he heard, okay? Okay, so we're talking about faith is hope and evidence, okay? So he started hoping in it. How do we know? What is the evidence that Noah put his hope in the word of God he heard? He started building the ark. The ark was finished when the flood came, okay? So we see with Noah, he put his hope in the word of God before it started raining. He put his hope in the word of God when he heard the word of God. And then he started doing evidence because he believed the word of God. Let's look at another example. Another example. Okay, we're going to look at uh, 11 and 12. It's talking about Sarah's faith. And, and, and Pastor already talked about Sarah. We see, and once again, this is a snapshot of uh, a Snapchat. How about that? I like that new term. <laughs> but it's a snapshot of uh, Sarah's faith. You, we can read about Sarah. And in Genesis 12, 23, this is Sarah. She's Abraham's wife. Okay, and basically Sarah heard the word of God. What did she hear? She heard that she was going to have a son. She heard that she was going to be the mother of nations. Okay. Okay. Now, Sarah, as your pastor already mentioned, she had some struggles, some stumbles. Okay. You know, she said the baby wasn't coming fast enough. And then, you know, she went to her husband, Abraham. Okay. And uh, she said, you know, like, have you considered Hagar? He looked over her. He said, my Lord Jesus. I haven't considered her, but now that you said so, Sarah. <laughs> Y'all know you say that. <laughs> so, so she didn't always, her, her faith didn't always line up. But then as Pastor already said, and as we know, as seven, now with the Hagar thing, that happened when she was over 70 years old. Okay? So she was still hoping, and she said, God, if you haven't done it by now, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to help you. But then we see at 90 years old, okay, that's when she finally had the baby. So basically, she had to have evidence, Sarah, too. What she did, first she heard the word of God, okay? She heard she was going to be the mother of nations. She was going to have a son. Sarah then put her hope in the word of God, okay? And then she did evidence before it was seen, okay? You know, you can't have a baby without doing evidence before it's seen, all right? So we see Sarah did faith actions, okay? We're going to look at one more example. Then we're going to make it plain to us, okay? We're going to look at Abraham, okay? Abraham is the father of faith. You hear pastor talk about Abraham all the time, amen? Now, we look at Abraham. We see over in Genesis 12, um, you know, Abraham, God talks to Abraham. And uh, we see uh, the account of Abraham in Hebrews in uh, verses 8 through 10 and verses 17 through 19. But over in Genesis 12, we see God speaks to Abraham. He says, hey, you know, if you leave your father's household, he says, then I'm going to make you a great nation. And he said, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make your name great. And I'm going to make you a blessing and I'm going to bless those who bless you. And, and in you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. And so basically God told him, leave your family household and all this stuff is going to happen. All this stuff. OK. And so what did Abraham do? Now, this sound pretty big because, you know, uh, you know, he got to leave. And that means you ain't connected to folk. And so, but, but Abraham said, cool, I, I hear you. So Abraham also placed his hope in the word of God he heard, okay? Evidence that he did. He left his father's house, okay? Amen? We see more evidence that he believed. He placed evidence in the word of God he heard. Evidence Abraham did. He praised and worshiped God in advance. We see that over there in Genesis 12. More evidence that Abraham put his, his hope in the word of God he heard. We see over in, in, in Genesis, I believe that's 14, he gave tithe, okay? This is all before he had big bank in his pocket, okay? So he's believing God that he's going to be a blessing, and so he's doing stuff like he's already a blessing, okay? More evidence, more evidence on Abraham. Abraham, we see over in, I believe it's Genesis 14 also, basically he goes to war with this one king. King comes back with him, him and Abraham. King says, hey, let me something. I, I need to, I want to give you some money, okay, because you helped me defeat this other people. Abraham said, listen, I can't take your spoils of war because I don't want to say that man gave it to me because God's my blessing. Wait a minute. You ain't rich yet and you telling the enemy keep your money to yourself? And he said, yes, sir, I'm telling the enemy, keep your money to yourself because I want to make sure that everybody know that God is my blessing. So that what that's telling us is some of the money that folk may give us, sometimes we may have to say no even when we need it. Amen? If, we, if God is speaking to our hearts and he said no even when we need that nickel, 
we got to say, no, nah, no, nah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need it from you. No, sir. We, we got to be kind because we want to, you know, witness to them. But no, no, we don't need it from them. Let's talk about Abraham a little bit more, okay? He defiled the faith. We also see Abraham, okay? We see him, and y'all know the scripture when, when, and, and, when the angel's about to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And so, you know, Abraham starts with 50. He works his all the way down to 10. If just 10 folks here, you know, God, would you save it? But look at this. this look at this. Abraham believed the word of God that he's a blessing, so he's praying for his unsaved friends. Those folk he know doing all kinds of crazy over there, okay? So basically, he already believed to the blessing. Let's look at one more thing about Abraham. We see Abraham. Oh, Abraham. Abraham also messed up. Abraham messed up. Abraham told Sarah, because he had a good-looking wife. Okay, Sarah, good-looking. So he told Sarah, listen, when folk come around, okay, tell them that you're my sister, because I don't want to get killed. So, so sound like a little fear there. That song we were singing before, he might should have sung that song. <laughs> but he said, listen, tell them you're my sister. Okay, so now King Abimelech comes around and basically uh, King Abimelech, he says, you're my sister. So King Abimelech uh, takes Sarah as a part of his um, quorum or, or whatever they call it. But he didn't have no kind of relationship with her, but she's a part. And so then the Lord caused problems in King Abimelech's camp basically. And, and so then King Abimelech comes back to Abraham and says, what's up, man? And he says, why didn't you tell me this is, you know, your wife? Because you could have caused harm on me. And so he gave Abraham his wife back. So Abraham is the cause of his problem. Okay. Okay. Now I, I say that because sometimes we the cause of other folk problem. Us, us saints. Okay. Okay. Cool. Right. Just, just make sure we ain't, you know, we ain't perfect. Right. All right. I just want to make sure. But then what did Abraham do? Okay. After, okay, he gives him back, you know, he gives Abraham back his wife. Abraham prays and blesses him. So that, what that tells us is basically we see in Abraham, I'm going to get to our example, that we got to do the same thing. It doesn't make a difference, okay? We cause folk problems, okay? Then we got to turn around and pray for them, amen? amen. So, so I, all these three examples I, I really wanted to get to, and I hope I brought the point out, a couple things. They heard from God. Okay, they heard from God. You got to hear from God. We talked about how you hear from God, Bible, pastor, you know, how you hear from God. They heard from God. Then they put their hope in the word of God. You got to put your hope in the word of God. Okay. And then they showed evidence that they believed the word of God before it came to pass. Okay.